Hello, everyone, and welcome to Go to Market AI, the future of your go to market tech stack. I'm your host, Sarah McConnell. These days, it seems like every product has AI, but on this show, we want to go a level deeper so you can see firsthand how businesses are actually applying AI to solve your use cases. We're going deep into those use cases and showing you live demos of the latest and greatest in AI technology. Today, I'm joined by Sunil Rao, founder and CEO at Tribble. Sunil, welcome. Thank you for joining us on the show today. Thanks for having me, Sarah. All right. I'm really excited. I will admit that I have not seen a demo of Tribble before, but before we jump into that, I'd love to know, who is Tribble? What do you guys do? And who are you helping in the market? Yeah. So once again, thanks for having me. Super excited to talk to you guys today about what we do. Uh, Tribble is all about go-to-market automation. Uh, a little bit of a background on the founder. Uh, I'm the founder and CEO and my co-founder, of Ray. Uh, we're both ex-Salesforce employees. And in our experience scaling teams at Salesforce, you know, one of the things that we came across quite a bit was this synergy across go-to-market teams, thinking through how we bring together uh, these new products that we're launching at the company and how we bring them to scale and bring them to customers. Uh, and we both shared many roles at the company uh, but I think suffice to say, you know, one of the biggest challenges we came across was scaling deep product knowledge and deep industry knowledge across the pre-sales and go-to-market teams in the company. And you know, if we think about who Triple is meant to help, it's meant to help B two B companies scale their go-to-market teams. Um, and you know, I think if you think about how we've kind of uh, built the product and how we're thinking about what it means for our customers. We're seeing a lot of proliferation of SaaS technology out there. I and mean, this is no surprise to anyone. People have SaaS fatigue, I think, out there if you talk to a lot of customers. And, you know, we're we're all about kissing these apps goodbye. Like we genuinely <laughs> think that we are now in a new phase of how software will be developed. Um, just the other day, Bill Gates put this blog post out talking about how AI agents are the future. And I know you're gonna hear a lot of that terminology coming up and people are gonna start talking about it now. Uh, but we we really believe that from day one, and that's how we've been building our product. It's it's about these agents that go in, they integrate with the systems you already have, they learn from your data, and they take action within the tools you already have. I think that's a key point. Reuse what you have and maximize the utility of those things. That's amazing. And I'm so excited to now move into the demo because you, the fact that you guys are meant for go-to-market teams, and this is go-to-market AI, I can't think of a better demo to get on the show. So that being said, Sunil, I would love to jump into the demo and just see what Tribble is all about and see your AI functionality in action. Excellent. So right before I jump in, Sarah, just some context setting, you know, uh, we're going to focus on one out of the multiple agents that we have. Uh, we'll focus on the questionnaire RFP agent. Uh, but in, in how we built out the stack, really, there's three, right? There's this questionnaire RFP agent. There's a sales engineering agent. We'll touch on that just briefly during the demo today. Uh, and we've also got this content agent for marketing, which we will talk about, but not be showing in that. Awesome. Look at that. The the beautiful document that is the RFP, beautifully colored and in all its full glory that- All of our sales reps out here. there flinched a little bit. They saw it and just kind of, uh. <laughs> and, and look, you know, I've had my share of these. I used to, I used to be a sales engineer many years ago. Um, and- these things, you know, they take up a lot of time and these things are still rampant, whether they're in the form of actual RFPs or they are infosecs where, you know, you now have to provide a lot of the security um, and compliance information back to your customers about what your software can, can't do, et cetera, et cetera. So I'm going to play the role of Daniel, who's actually one of our engineers. And I'm going to quickly walk through what Daniel does when one of these comes in at Tribble. So you know, he, he kind of opens this up and typically, you know, you're working out of a Google sheet or you're working in some weird portal where, you know, the structure of these questions reveals itself as you click this choose your own adventure navigation. Uh, but regardless, the point is, let's meet Daniel where he lives, which is in the browser. And as a result, the first modality for this uh, RFP questionnaire agent is a Chrome extension inside the browser. So okay. here I click this button on the top right and it's popped open the triple Chrome extension. And very quickly, you can see, Daniel can see all of the different questionnaires or infosecs or RFPs he's already started in his answer. Mm. And if I scroll down over here, I've already got one for info, uh, for the infosec for Opus Tech. Uh, when I pop that open, you can see some of the questions that are in this document on the left that have already been sent in by Daniel. 
And the intention here really is, hey, I've got all of these questions. I, I now typically would have to go through these and maybe use some legacy software, which has like a Q&A data bank and a whole bunch of project management stuff. So can I just get straight to the answer? Like, can't I just have this generate answers? Uh, and, and that's really what Tribble is intended to do in this scenario. So I'm going to very quickly select all these questions here on the left side. And when I come over here on the right in the panel, I can go in and I can add all these questions. When I paste it, Tribble immediately recognizes that there are 18 of them. Uh, and then I can say, look, all of these questions that I just added to the system, actually, they're all security related questions. So I'm going to assign them and apply it and immediately organize this. And then I click on generate answers and Tribble's off to the races. The intention here is Daniel doesn't have to spend the time looking for answers. Tribble will generate them. And as they come in, Daniel can now take a look at what's come in and dig in to whether or not the answer is acceptable. So let me click over here on this first one, which is already pre-generated. Uh, and you can Daniel can quickly see, hey, you know, there's some detailed uh, documentation that was referenced. You can actually even see the reference numbers of the documentation here. Cool. And as he reads this, if he wants to understand a little bit more about where it came from, you can click on sources. This is actually all of our internal SOC 2 compliance docs, right? Stuff that uh, Daniel and T don't like digging through in order to find an answer. Uh, but you can you can very quickly see, you know, all the different sources that were that were referenced um, and and how they were pulled into the answer. And the interesting thing here, Sarah, is when you sometimes answer these questions, you might not want to generate a new answer. You might actually see something in an existing doc that was good enough as is. And in that case, you can just quickly use that answer verbatim so that you're not creating something new or deviating away from um, the general acceptable answer in that scenario. That's really amazing. I love a theme that we've seen a little bit on this show that I don't think actually we've seen enough of in all the products is the sources. And I love that you've built into the UX here that I can just see where that came from. So I trust what's being generated. I know what what sourced it. I can go in and, and to your point, just select something or use that as a, a foundation. I also can absolutely see a use case where you find some outdated documents that you didn't even know were outdated because you see it's pulling and you're like, oh, I got to go change this in our systems because I forgot that this is our, you know, our infosec from last year or whatever it might be or our SOC 2 from last year. Um, so this is really, really cool. I love that you went there, Sarah, because that is precisely one of the first things that one of our customers brought up, which is like, hey, this doesn't look right. It's like, well, when you debug further, you realize that your documentation wasn't updated. And, you know, I've I've been part of go-to-market teams for a long time, even at Salesforce. I, I recall how many times documents go stale, right? So it's like, this gives you the ability to also crowdsource the constant update without having to do these batch updates at the beginning of the year that take a lot of time uh, as you kind of hunt and peck these things down. So, you know, that was that was one question for Daniel. He's got a bunch more to go. And, and as he goes through these, you know, you can kind of go in. And, and one of the things you can also do is mark them for review. So light workflow instead of having a heavy project management based workflow, really, so that it's focused on getting the answers out. Uh, you know, one of the other things we've heard from our customers is most people have an SLA and turnaround time of like a week when they get one of these. Um, and it's it's difficult to turn around if you don't have some assistance. So uh, very quickly going down here, let's take a look at this question. Uh, Opus Technology prioritized data security compliance. Daniel takes a look at this and he says, wait a minute, HIPAA compliance? We're not HIPAA compliant. Um, maybe that sets off an alarm. Now, that, this could be for any reason. Either Daniel is not up to date or uh, the documentation is not. But in this case, you know, it's probably Daniel that's not up to date. So he goes in and says, look, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to provide an edit here because I think that uh, this is actually not correct. So I'm gonna, whoop, I'm gonna come in here and say, although we are not HIPAA compliant, and then this remove this part over here. Okay, great, that looks great. So now it's not talking about us being HIPAA compliant. I won't get in trouble. Uh, and then he hits save. So. Now, you might not necessarily want people to be able to make these kind of modifications without having some sort of a checking mechanism in the background. Like you've yeah. just overridden something in the back. Uh, and, and listening to our customers, you know, this is one of the key things where we really didn't want to rebuild workflow into the tool. We wanted this to be in a tool that they already live and work in. So with that, if I quickly slip, uh, change over now, uh, and now I'm going to play myself, uh, Sunil, I'm the approver of Daniel's request. Um, oh, and look, this, that's, a, that's our wonderful offsite from last week, the team having dinner, 
Uh, but then here on the left side, I see a Q&A approval notification. Uh, and when I click on that, I see that that questionnaire triggered an approval directly in Slack using the workflow capability. So once again, it's that questionnaire agent tied into the tools that you work in, taking action, asking me for a decision. Uh, and then I take a look at this as a reviewer and I'm like, wait a minute, that doesn't sound right. Uh, we are HIPAA compliant. Why, why is Daniel saying this? Uh, so what do I do? Well, the beauty of it is now with the sales engineer agent, which is another manifestation of the RFP agent, I can at mention Tribble directly here and say, are we HIPAA compliant? And, you know, I'm not going to call out Daniel by name, but let's see what Tribble comes back with and, and, and understand why Daniel might be suggesting that change. I'm going to quickly click on reply over here and close the extension so we see the whole screen. Like, oh, okay, well, that, that's pretty clear. We've become HIPAA compliant a week ago. So this is, this is very clearly uh, documented and I have a reference over here. Uh, the beauty of this is this agent is not just connected to data sources, it's also connected to systems. Yeah. So now I could do something like at Tribble, um, how, you know, Daniel's talking to Opus, was it? So uh, this is for Opus Heck, Why do they need HIPAA? And this could be any kind of a question related to the data about the customer that may be locked up in another transactional system. In this case, you know, it's going to pull up that specific account record over here that's sitting in your external system. And it's telling you the reason why. And this, in this case, it actually took it from a notes file that was attached to that record. But what's happening here is the sales engineering agent has access to systems as well, not just the data that we fed it. And it can now help debug and look at the system and take action within it. Before I decide, hey, um, actually, Daniel, I, I reviewed your request. I'm going to click on this decision here, say declined. Um, we are already HIPAA compliant, plus seems like Opitz needs this, whatever that case may be. So that's in a nutshell the tie in of how the questionnaire agent works alongside. Uh, the digital SC that's in Slack um, and all these things come together uh, for, for our customers. So I'll this pause it. So cool. I, so being at a like mid-sized company, I still see, I'm in some of our, I joined when we were very much smaller. So I'm still in a lot of Slack channels that I don't necessarily know anything about. But a lot of times I see when we get RFPs, our SEs who are fantastic asking a lot of these security questions and every once in a while, if I like go into the the threads, you can see how there, there's confusion. Like stuff changes rapidly, data security, they live in a lot of different systems. And you'll even see people kind of going back and forth in Slack about like, is this the right answer? Are we actually compliant here? And it just almost reminded me of like, it's you can just ask it like Google, like, hey, why do we need this? And it's going instead of that SE having to then go into your CRM data or into wherever your repository for your documents are and try to hunt this down, which is going to take a ton of time. That was so fast. I mean, you showed that in just a couple of minutes. That's incredible. And I know our SC team, no one loves an RFP. They do take a lot of time. And I have to imagine this is just speeds up that process immensely. Yeah, no, Sarah, that's, that's spot on. I think, you know, the customers that we have right now, the business cases are very clear cut, right? It's, it's actual amount of hours saved and time back. So those folks can focus on the more strategic conversations and the deals where SEs should be frankly spending their time, not hunting down knowledge. And as your team grows, that stuff starts to get really spread out. There's a lot of people, information doesn't get passed around as easily. We're all virtual. So yeah, I see a ton of use cases here. Yeah. I And, and the last thing I'll say, Sarah, is you know the interesting thing is we're at this precipice where all of a sudden... What can happen with these tools is broaching what were only was, was only restricted to the domain of humans, right? Like people could only, like you would get hired into a new role uh, at a company. You get this Google Drive of training docs put in front of you. You get three months to get onboarded and you get a bunch of SaaS licenses and you got to figure out how to weave all this stuff together. Well, what we're doing is very much looking at parts of that stack and saying SaaS licenses to different systems. Yeah, we can connect to those. Yep. We'll connect to that Google Drive or whatever the input training content is. We'll train the tool on that information and allow it to take actions in these systems. And I think we're going to see a lot more of that paradigm take shape. 
Yeah. Well, that's amazing that you guys are on the forefront of this. And with that being said, I would love to transition us into our lightning round Q&A section, if that's okay with you. Yeah. Uh, The first question here being, how long have you been building AI into Tribble? Um, So I would say, like, can I give you an answer which is negative in time? Because I think the, the... before we even started Tribble, uh, I, I think as early back as GPT-2, when the first one of these first language models became a little bit more prevalent and OpenAI released something, um, I had already started playing with it and looking at use cases in terms of how we can help create uh, content and wire it into the workflows within go-to-market. Uh, but joking aside, you know, since day one, Sarah, I think that's what the one of the one of the most amazing things of that this journey has been how. We as a team are baking all this technology into everything that we do from day one. Uh, and uh, building an AI first company is really exciting because I feel like a kid in a candy store. Every day there's something new that we can incorporate to make the product better for our customers. I love asking that question to any company that has .ai as their domain, which if you're listening to this and you want to check out Tribble, Tribble.ai is the domain because I know the answer is going to be, this has been the foundation of our product since day one. So Love that. Now, what you showed in the demo today, is it generally available now for anyone if they were to go purchase Tribble today or tomorrow? It is. It is generally available today. Uh, you can download that Chrome extension, but it won't do you any good until you have an account. Um, and, uh, you know, one of the things that uh, that we're doing with all of our customers is spending a lot of time up front thinking through how we load their information uh, in a trusted way uh, and integrate with their systems uh, in order to make what we just showed you on the screen a reality. Amazing. And speaking of customers, who are some of the current customers that are benefiting from Tribble's AI functionality? Yeah, we're very fortunate to have some awesome customers, uh, even since the earliest of days. Uh, we're working closely with the teams over at UiPath mm-hmm. uh, and over at Own Backup. Uh, and you know, a lot of companies uh, that we're working with are in the software space, but we're also starting to work with companies in other industries as well. Because as you can see, the technology is broadly applicable, I think, yeah. uh, especially when it comes to this problem. Amazing. Okay. Now I love this question. What is next on your AI roadmap? Where are you guys trying to take Tribble in the future? Yeah. What One of the hard things to crack in this space, Sarah, is it's a data engineering problem, right? If you look at how much information is there within the enterprise, everyone is trying to solve a similar problem in the mm-hmm. space of AI, which is how do we make sense of all this information? How do we structure it correctly before we take it in in order to make better use of it? Um, a lot of the work that we're doing is really being deliberate about how we think about cleanliness of information, how we provide AI-assisted tooling in terms of cleaning up data before it gets into the system, uh, and then also building out uh, ways to measure the ongoing efficacy of the tool and allowing users to really see the inner workings. Uh, because when you're in this world of, of handing off a piece of work and having an agent go complete it, you really want to see the task and what it's doing in the intermittent steps. Because then, you know, you you have this balancing act of like trust versus the output is magical, but you do want some level of oddity. So all of these are the big questions, I think, of the space. And, and our roadmap really is aligned to as we release new magical features, how do we make sure there's transparency? That's amazing. Okay. The very last question is, are there any other AI powered products that your team is using in your go to market tech stack that you want to give a shout out to? Uh, absolutely. Uh, they're actually another Salesforce Ventures uh, portfolio company. Shout out to uh, to Grain. Uh, mm-hmm. We're using them since day one. Uh, you you see this, uh, you know, Sunil's note taker or Ray's note taker pop up at every meeting that we're in. Uh, and what it's done a really good job of is just help us build this database of all the meetings that we've had. Um, and it's been fantastic for onboarding new employees because all of our customer conversations, everything that we've done, uh, as we think about using them as assets for enablement, it's just been a very uh, low maintenance way of collecting that information, but then also a high impact um, onboarding asset when when we think about getting people up to speed on the company. So big shout out to Gray. It's an awesome product. Amazing. Well, Sunil, thank you so much for joining the show. As a Salesforce Ventures company, I qualified. I love having other Salesforce Venture and Salesforce backed and founded companies on the show because I know you guys can just build really cool and useful products for your end users. So I loved the demo. This has been amazing. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you for having me, Sarah.